Hi, and welcome to the Investor Financing Podcast. I'm your host, Bo Eckstein, and today we're going to talk about CPACE financing and the states that it is approved in today. And so what is CPACE financing and why would you want it? If you're doing large renovation on commercial type properties or building ground up on asset classes like uh, industrial, multifamily, assisted living, um, adaptive reuse projects, CPACE financing comes into the capital stack and gives you higher, higher leverage. Welcome to the Investor Financing Podcast, where we interview real estate investors and lenders so you can learn all the secrets to getting your projects funded and scale your portfolio. Learn about fix and flip loans, burr financing, rental, fix to rent, commercial, multifamily bridge loans, business loans, and so much more. And now, your host, Bo Eckstein. Hi, and welcome to the Investor Financing Podcast. And I'm your host, Bo Eckstein. And today we're going to talk about CPACE financing and the states that it is approved in today. So if you're watching this on YouTube or, or the website, you can see on the screen all the states that are green. Those are approved states for CPACE financing. So California, Nevada, Oregon, Utah, Colorado, Nebraska, Texas, Arkansas, Florida, Kentucky, Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Florida. These states right now are approved. Now, they're approved at the state level, and then some of the counties have not yet opted in, um, and so some of the counties that aren't yet opted in for the program. It is not that hard to get opted in. Some are more challenging, but typically if you're looking at the map, the green states here, those st states are already approved and eligible for CPACE financing. So what is CPACE financing and why would you want it? If you're doing large renovation on commercial type properties or building ground up on asset classes like uh, industrial, multifamily, assisted living, um, adaptive reuse projects. CPACE financing comes into the capital stack and gives you higher, higher leverage. It's a lot cheaper than MES or PREF equity. And you're able to achieve, like I said, higher leverage. So right now you might be able to get 60, 70% loan to cost from a bank. Well, CPACE financing fills the gap. It funds eligible products, green eligible products, in the construction budget. So typically 15 to say 30% of line item budgets could be eligible for this program. And essentially you have your senior lender and then you have CPACE financing that comes in. It doesn't come in like a mortgage on the property, like a debt, like a traditional lien would be. It's actually an assessment like you would see in the property tax bill. So it's a little different. You have to get the senior lender, the senior lender's consent that it's okay to finance with PACE. And that's kind of the trick of this whole thing. So it's it's better when you're doing development projects to start with the end in mind, engage a CPACE lender first, get the property pre-approved as far as you know eligible uh, loan proceeds. And then you go out and find your senior lender from there. You're listening to the Investor Financing Podcast. We'll be right back after this break. And now a word from our sponsors. Want to save money on your taxes? Cost segregation is a strategic tax planning concept that saves money by deferring federal and state taxes through accelerated depreciation. Get a free benefit analysis today. Please visit costseghub.com for more information on cost segregation and all of our cost recovery services that can put more cash flow in your pocket. So that's how we're doing this in the capital stack. Typically, you're going to want 15% um, borrower or sponsor equity in the deal. And there's kind of an underwriting system that we use uh, that, that measures. There's debt service coverage ratio. There's the pace to value ratio. There's certain ratios we use to underwrite these deals. And collectively, um, we underwrite on the stabilized value and the stabilized cash flow. And we're looking for, depending on the asset type, a debt service coverage ratio of anywhere from one15 
to 1.45, depending on the asset class itself. And that's with the senior debt and our debt based on the stabilized cash flows and values. So we're able to achieve higher leverage at a lower cost typically than, than PREF or MES uh, debt. And it, it works really well. And the key for, for developers out there listening to this is to you know engage, engage us first on these type of projects and then go out and get senior debt because although there's been you know 250, 300 lenders out there that have already banks and credit unions that have approved it, there's a lot of banks and lenders that don't know anything about CPACE and they just are a little bit resistant. So there's a process of engaging these bankers to get them to approve this. And then depending on where the property is located in the county and the city, there's different charts as far as what items are eligible for the build. But but really to assess these properties, we, we need a pro forma, a value, a stabilized value, a construction budget, and some information on the sponsors and developers. We can quickly do a, a rough kind of quote and then then from there we do a term sheet to, to let you know what you can expect you get a term sheet it, it gives you uh your, your loan pro uh gross loan proceeds breakdown of of the costs and expenditures and then from there that's when you go and you shop for your senior debt on these development and construction projects we're seeing a lot of them coming in um for adaptive reuse where you're taking a multi, uh you're taking a an office building converted to multifamily or something like that a lot of a lot of uh a lot of pace financing in there, multifamily, hospitality, assisted living. It's a great tool. I'm happy to share my knowledge uh, with you if you're interested in learning the uh, all the benefits of CPACE financing. Thanks for plugging in, and I will see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Investor Financing Podcast. For show notes and useful resources, please visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com. For questions or comments, email info at InvestorFinancingPodcast.com. If you enjoy our show, please share it with your network. Until next time.